بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم في البدايه احب اتوجه بالشكر لقسم جراحه العظام جامعه اسكندريه مستشفى الحضره الجامعي مستشفى الايمان العظيم على الدعوه الكريمه دي انا بتشرف ان انا دايما اكون مع حضراتكم وبستمتع وبسعد ان انا اكون موجود معاكم بشكر استاذ الدكتور عادل رفعت رئيس القسم والدكتور عبد الله حماد السيد مديريتور ودكتور بهاء موضوع طبعا مديريتي النهارده في الجلسه واتمنى يعني زي ما هو قال ان شاء الله تكون محاضره كويسه احنا طبعا الايمجنج اوف ذا حاجه كبيره خالص يعني فاحنا هنقسمها على قد ما نقدر على مرتين يعني وان شاء الله تكون يعني وجبه كده دسمه للكل باذن الله I have nothing to disclose. هبدا النهارده بدايه مختلفه شويه انا المحاضره دي كنت قلتها قبل كده في بيبر عندنا انا ممبر في الناتشورال سكيتر سوسايتي المجله بتاعتنا سكيتر راديولوجي في بيبر عندنا في 2020 بتتكلم عن ان هم جابوا 230 بيشنت مش بيشنت سوري 230 فولنتيرز ادلتس ما بيشتكوش ما عندهمش اي شكوى من ركبته وعملوا لهم ام ار اي واكتشفوا ان عندهم ابنورمال فايندنجز خلينا نستخدم اللفظ ده ابنورمال فايندنجز في حوالي 97% من الستراكشرز مش منهم 97% من المنسكاي من الليجمنتس من البون من الكليتش يعني وكلهم كانوا بيشتكوا ان هم ما بيشتكوش خالص فطبعا كاتبين في الكونكلوجن بتاعهم ديسبايت ذا انكريزنج يوز اوف هاي ريزوليوشن ام ار اي ان براكتس دايجنوزز شود بي برايمرلي based on patient's medical history and physical examination by an experienced clinician instead of solely focusing on MRI disease. طبعا احنا كده بنسعد زملائنا جراحين العظام لان يعني طبعا مهم جدا 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 ان ان الكلينيكال طبعا مهم قوي واحنا على طول بننادي وبنطلب من حضراتكم ان انتم دايما تجايد اس يعني لازم حضرتك الريكوست ان انت بعته يكون في انت بتدور على ايه؟ يعني انت What are you searching for? انت بتدور على ايه؟ في نفس الوقت في بيبر ثانيه في الماركت الايمجنج ان هم جابوا كاديفرز وعملوا لهم ام ار اي وارثروسكوبي واكتشفوا ان في هيدن ارياز يعني طبعا هو مش اكتشاف طبعا بس هو يعني عملوا كوريليشن ما بين الاماكن اللي بتبقى احنا بنوتيفاي في الـ في الام ار اي ممكن لو 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 الفيزيشن او الارثروسكوبست ما ما كانش بيدور عليها مش هيشوف ف الهدف من البدايه ان انا بادئها هي ان انا اقول ان 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 الكومبينيشن او التيم ورك هو ده اساس الشغل في اي برانش في اي حاجه لكن احنا في شغلنا النهارده هنتكلم على ماسك سيتر بيولوجي احنا بنتكلم عن ان ان حضراتكم احنا عشان نعرف نعمل ريبورت كويس للام ار اي ونعمل انتربريتيشن للحاجه اللي قدامنا لازم نكون ماشيين ورا الكلينيكال اكزامينيشن والهيستوري كويس اللي حضراتكم اخذتوه وبعتهم اللي بيشاف انا دايما في محاضراتي ببدا بالسلايد دي ثابته عندي في كل المحاضرات لازم نتاكد دايما نتيجه للبراكتس الديلي بتاع الديلي براكتس بتاعنا ان احنا الناحيه اللي احنا بنشوفها هي الناحيه اللي المريض بيشتكي منها يا لحضراتكم بعتينها لان ساعات كتير بيحصل لخبطه في القصه دي. الديتيلد هيستوري مهمه قوي ان احنا بنقسم البيشنس في الماسكو سكيتر راديولوجي انتو تو بيج كاتيجوريز او جروبس اكوردنج للتروما يعني العينين اتخبط ولا ما اتخبطش والتروما دي طبعا حاجه كبيره جدا من اول ما واحد ال 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 في ناس بتعتبر التويستنج انجري والكلام ده من الناس العاديه يعني مش الدكاتره طبعا ان 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 التويستنج انجري دي از نوت تروما انفاع او اتخبط في حاجه لا طبعا. وير تو لوك فور وات يو ار لوكينج فور الجمله دي دايما بقعني بيها ان حضراتكم لازم تبقوا عارفين معانا ان احنا في الرياضه عندنا ايتمز كتيره موداليتيز كتيره جدا اكس راي والسونار والسي تي ولكن في الام ار بالذات لما نتكلم عن الام ار عندنا سيكونسز كتيره في شغلنا عندنا حاجه اسمها تي 1 وتي 2 وكل واحد من دول في فات سبريشن تي 1 فات سبريشن وتي 2 فات سبريشن وستير و و و و بي دي فات سات وبي دي من غير فات اقصد عندنا ايتمز كتيره جدا احنا بنستخدمها مش كل الاستراكشرز نقدر نشوفها في نفس السيكونس 
فحضراتكم من بقيه المحاضره هنشوف ان في حاجات ما ينفعش نشوفها بدا وما ينفعش نشوفها ولازم الحاجه الثانيه كمان لازم حضراتكم تشوفوا اي ستراكشر دي عندنا فايده في الام ار اي ان هو مالتي بلانر من ده اوكي اوكي وير تو لوك فور ات لوكينج فور ذس مين ذات وين وي يوز ذا ام ار اي وي هاف تو بي كيرفول ويتش سيكونس تو بي يوز فور ذا اني ستراكشر When you see the ACL, for example, uh, the ACL uh, uh, is, uh, should uh, be seen in PD, PD fat set, uh, T2 terpspin echo, but you cannot uh, examine this uh, uh, structure, vital structure, in uh, uh, T2 star or T2 gradient uh, sequences. Uh, finally, uh, for, from the general rules, we have to uh, uh, have our own key. Uh, you can describe it as what, what, whatever you want, um, checklist, um, uh, algorithm, whatever. You have to have your own checklist to avoid for forgetting or missing any uh, uh, point from the uh, examined uh, MRI. To start with, we, have to, uh, we will start with the meniscus. You have to have certain points. It start with medial meniscus, lateral meniscus, whatever you want, but you have to have certain points, certain items to be uh, checked before you leave the meniscus to other uh, structures. As we all know, we have uh, 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 the blood supply of the meniscus decide the healing potential of the meniscus. We have three parts of the meniscus, the outer part, which is uh, uh, vascular, and uh, the inner part is not vascular and, and uh, supplied by the synovial fluid. The middle part is the red-white uh, uh, junction. This is an axial image from the MRI. We can see here the medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus. You can see that the posterior horn of the medial meniscus is larger than the anterior horn, while in the lateral meniscus, both horns are uh, equal in size. This is an important data for the interpretation of the meniscal injuries. This is a zoomed uh, image for the uh, sagittal MRI. You can see here the medial meniscus, both horns, the posterior horn is larger than the anterior horn. This is the normal anatomy. While in the lateral meniscus, we have uh, uh, anterior and posterior horns are equal in size. This is what we can see in our cross section uh, uh, for the menisci. Uh, this is coronal images. This is the axial, and these are the sites of the cuts we can see in uh, 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 coronal images from the anterior to posterior. And this is the case in sagittal images. We can see that this is not sagittal pure, sagittal is slightly uh, 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 sagittal oblique images. You can see here this one cut in the body that appears in that way. The following cuts and the following cuts, this is to have constriction in the middle. And then we have two uh, uh, triangles uh, at the inner portion of the meniscus in this sagittal or sagittal oblique images. The lateral meniscus inner portion is slight higher than the outer port and we, sometimes we can see a, a little bit uh, um, abnormal signal, and this is one of the pitfalls in the interpretation of the sky. So if you have any change in the size, or the normal size, or the signal of the meniscus, you have to be careful uh, to uh, identify a tear in the uh, meniscus. This is the old uh, terminology for the sky. This is the normal meniscus. If you have a small signal or a glo globular signal, we can see this, this uh, degenerative changes. But if we can see this signal inter uh, violating or uh, reaching uh, the superior or the inferior surface of the meniscus, this is uh, a tear or uh, this uh, complex or uh, branching uh, tear type four. This is the old terminology. I underline this uh, sentence, the meniscus does not have to be planned. This is very important. I mean that not every uh, signal or not all the signals, abnormal signal inside the meniscus should be interpreted as there. 
this is the experience from uh, the type of the machine, the, uh, the movement of the patient during the examination, uh, the, the type of the sequence, as I said before, is it, is it, is it T1 or T2 or whatever the sequence uh, 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 you are using for uh, the meniscus. You can uh, see that this signal is not, is not a tear in the uh, meniscus that you have to be, so you have to be very careful uh, during interpreting the uh, uh, different sequences. This is what we are using for the types of the meniscus. Uh, uh, as you can see it in the uh, operating room, the arthroscopy, uh, longitudinal tear, horizontal tear, and radial tear. This is the complex tear of these types of uh, simple tears, the bucket handle tear, flap tear, or parrot beak tear. This is the collection. This is the simple tears, longitudinal, transverse, and radial tear. And these are the uh, advanced or complex types of the tears. Longitudinal tears parallel to the long axis of the meniscus. You can see it here. This is the uh, longitudinal tear in the uh, peripheral part of the meniscus. This is longitudinal uh, uh, tear. Uh, so it reaches both surfaces, the superior articular surface The longitudinal tears follow the collagen bundles that are parallel to the contour of the meniscus. This is very important. You can see that fibers are interrupted uh, all through the length of the meniscus longitudinally from the upper to the lower uh, uh, surface. Uh, this is a note for the bucket handle type of the meniscus. We can see three, two structures only in the intercondinal notch. The, uh, this is the PCL, this is the ACL, and we find another third structure in the intercondinal You have to be cautious to, because it may be a bucket handle tear or a pitfall, and this will come later in the uh, lecture. This is the flipped meniscus. As we said before, we have to check for the size of both uh, uh, horns, anterior horn and posterior horn. Here, we cannot see the posterior horn totally. It flipped anteriorly, and we can see both horns are in the anterior compartment of the uh, meniscal uh, uh, region. The horizontal tail divides the meniscus into upper and lower, top and bottom uh, uh, parts. The horizontal tear, another name for it, is the cleavage tear. And some authors, uh, are, uh, um, the horizontal tear, it might be degenerative tear or not degenerative tear, grade two degeneration. There is a conflict in this uh, point, but at all uh, uh, parts or all the situations, it is not reaching the superior or the inferior articular surface. Usually the horizontal tear, usually it is associated with uh, meniscuses. You have uh, to be careful in describing the meniscus you have to see the connection between this cyst and the meniscal tear, and we can see this later on. Radial tear is very uh, tricky, and you can see it in only one cut during the examination of the meniscus. Here, the absent uh, uh, or disrupted the uh, tip of the uh, meniscus and can see it in only one cut in the uh, following sequences. This is why you, should, you have to uh, uh, see them in the sky in uh, uh, sequential uh, pattern. This is the usual pattern of the radial tear in the uh, uh, common in uh, lateral meniscus, at, usually at the junction of the body uh, with the anterior or uh, posterior uh, uh, horns. You can see here the blunting uh, of uh, uh, the meniscus totally, and this is the shape of the radial tear in the axis. A very important entity is the meniscal root tear. Usually it was described as a degenerative tear, but now we can see the meniscal root in younger age group, just beneath the uh, the PCL, and you can see here the missing part of the uh, meniscal root, and this is the interruption on the inner portion of the medial meniscus. This is the most famous one of the meniscal root. You have four roots, of course, 
to anterior and posterior for uh, medial and lateral meniscus, but this is the commonest type of the meniscal root tear. This is another description for the uh, meniscus. You can see here the longitudinal tear. The radial tear is very tricky, very tricky radial tear. You have to be careful to, uh, to see the uh, radial tear in your images. And this is the uh, schematic uh, drawing of the meniscus. You can see here, so, sometimes the, the radial tear is not following the whole length of the meniscus. It is incomplete. It's, uh, we describe in my reports, incomplete radial uh, uh, tear. Uh, we can see here also another type of tear in the red zone. You can see this here. The complex tear, the complex tear, we have to describe it in axial, sagittal, but sometimes you cannot follow the, the, the pattern, the whole pattern, you can see that's a branching tear. It's following more than one uh, uh, type. Tear with medial subluxation. It's very important to describe this for the uh, uh, plan of the surgery you have. You can, yeah, I, I mean that this is out of the uh, scope of the arthroscopy. You have to describe this for planning the uh, surgery. This is another type of a flap tear and running to the inferior tibial gutter. The bucket handle tear is very serious uh, complication and uh, a serious, sorry, uh, um, reporting point. And we have to be careful. This is for radiologists. You have to be careful when you describe and you report a bucket handle tear, the double PCL sign. Can see this inside. And as, as I said before, we have only two structures. This is the ACL and this is the PCL. And this is the displaced fragment inside the intercondylar notion. This is the cause of locking attacks caused by bucket handle type. Very important entity, the discoid meniscus. Discoid meniscus is commonest variant, common variant describing an abnormality in large meniscal body. Not like the, the standard meniscus, it's a full, full meniscus. Uh, discoid meniscus is almost uniformly lateral. Most of the lateral meniscus are uh, on the lateral side. I didn't see a, mini a discoid meniscus on the medial side in my whole practice. Uh, criteria for diagnosis, you can see for the image, it's better for the image. You can see here, it's very bulky compared to the contralateral side. It is more than 12 millimeter in uh, width and uh, different between the two types of parts, more than three uh, uh, millimeter for uh, this, uh, the discoid uh, meniscus. Post-operative meniscus is very uh, important point and very difficult to interpret because of the lack of the data uh, during our interpretation. We need to know uh, what did the surgeon uh, did for the, the, what has a surgery did for the meniscus? Is it partial meniscectomy, suture, just uh, 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 the braidment of the uh, uh, meniscus, just parts of the, the necrotic material or the dead material. So uh, we have to know the type of the tear before the operation. What was the surgeon did for the uh, what they did the meniscus for the menisci, and uh, finally we may we may uh, go for uh, uh, arthrography for the uh, post-operative uh, menisci. This is a, a post-operative meniscus. This is the, the uh, for post-operative meniscus. You can see abnormal signal, the posterior horn, and this is the post-operative uh, changes, normal post-operative changes, and this is a uh, retail uh, after uh, arthrography. This is, sorry for us, after arthrography, you can see this, this is the abnormal uh, signal accepted post-operative, and this is uh, the retail uh, after uh, injection of uh, contrast. Sometimes in my report, I, I, do, I do it for a report, and we have, I, do, I can see uh, 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 a new tear in the meniscus, but I don't comment on the previous tear, 
and as I, as long as I don't know what uh, was the operation, it is partial mastectomy, it is a suture, or so on. Uh, we will go through uh, some uh, uh, tips and tricks in the uh, uh, menisca, menisca, meniscal uh, issues. This is very important in interpreting the lateral meniscus. We have, can see here the popliteal meniscal fascicles. We have superior and inferior. We can see it with high resolution uh, MRI. This is the popliteal tendon, meniscal, popliteal meniscal fascicles. This is a very important entity. It is hypermobile lateral meniscus. It causes very painful and tender lateral joint line. You can see here it is placed anteriorly. You can see here the pleto meniscal fascicles are missing. One of the very important tips and tricks here, the anterior transverse ligament uh, connecting both menisci anteriorly. You can see here the anterior transverse uh, meniscus and this should not be uh, interpreted as uh, tear in the anterior whole lateral meniscus. You can see here meniscofemoral ligament of uh, Risberg posterior to the lateral uh, posterior whole lateral meniscus, and this is not a tear. Here also the normal meniscal capsular recess, and uh, this is tear associated with edema and at uh, the area of meniscal capsular, sometimes it may be at the arthroscopy meniscal capsular uh, separation. This is what I said about the bucket handle diagnosis. You have to be careful if you, if you, saw, uh, if you see a, a third structure inside the intercondinal notch, don't forget the ob oblique meniscal meniscal ligament. This is the oblique meniscal meniscal ligament. He's, he's in, uh, Sagittal images, it's very important to see this in the coronal images. This is the one here starting from that, this type of meniscus. This is following, following, it reaches the other side. And in here, it appears as a third structure inside the intercondylar notch. This is not a bucket handle tear. This is the oblique meniscal meniscal ligament. Of course, the popliteus tendon is one of the commonest uh, uh, pitfalls and uh, regarding the tear in the posterior horn lateral meniscus. This is not tear, this is the popliteus tendon and posterior horn lateral meniscus. Ring meniscus is a rare uh, entity that we can see here the, the rounded inner portion of the meniscus. How can you avoid this mistake? You have by sequential following the sequence, the sequence of the images, sequence by sequence, you will not follow this uh, port is going inside the intercondylar notch. This is very important, the meniscal fluence, the irregularity of the inner margin of the meniscus, uh, sometimes it is mistaken for a tear in the body of the meniscus and we go again for this entity. Flip the meniscus is usually missed in images if you don't follow the sequences one by one. Another type of flipping of the meniscus, but inside, not outside. This is flipping of the meniscus inside. Uh, we will leave the meniscus now as we have part two uh, uh, in another session. So I will remove the other big uh, guys from the uh, from the presentation and we'll go for some small entities in the uh, knee. You can see the prepatellar bursitis, subcutaneous, just immediately anterior to the patella and this is the quadriceps tendon and this is the infrapatellar tendon. We have deep infrapatellar bursitis, deep to the patellar tendon inside the office pad fat, this is a large deep infrapatellar bursitis. And usually uh, it is associated with uh, exacerbation of uh, osgood schlatter uh, disease. The bursus, uh, uh, another bursus around the knee, the medial collateral bursitis. And uh, this is very important entity, the iliotibial band friction syndrome. This is uh, uh, normally you see the iliotibial band, this is the lateral femoral condyle, and you have to see that the fat layer, thin fat layer between the iliotibial band and the lateral femoral condyle. 
if we lost this fat and replaced by fluid signal hyperintensity in the fat set sequences, this means that we had the idiotibial band friction syndrome and usually comes with clinical diagnosis, query tear in the lateral meniscus. Uh, if you don't have this in your mind, you will lose it. The patella, we have six point, important points for the patella. Lateral subluxation and the retinaculum, coffers bed of fat, and you have to check for the retropatellar cartilage and the extensor mechanism, quadriceps, infrapatellar uh, uh, tendon. You have to check for these two tendons, the uh, visualized portion of this, the quadriceps tendon and the infrapatellar uh, uh, tendon. This is high grade tear in the quadriceps tendon. You can see it in the axial images and in the sagittal images. This is the patella, sorry. This is the patella, femur, and the, quadri oh, the whole quadriceps muscle is injured, and this is the quadriceps tendon. This is complete interruption of the uh, quadriceps tendon, and the, the, the gap is filled with a big uh, hematoma. We can see the patellar tendinopathy. Patellar, this is, I have a big entity. We have a big title and T pain from this. One of these causes is the patellar tendinopathy. Uh, we can see this uh, patellar tendinopathy common in uh, post ACL reconstruction in one tendon bone. We have, if you have your graft from the tibia, uh, patellar tendon with part of the tibia, part of the patella, usually it ends with evident uh, patellar tendinopathy in the infrapatellar tendon. Uh, this is a case of complete tear of the uh, patellar tendon. You can see it in the images of T2 and PD uh, uh, images. This is the golden plica, medial patellar plica, thin uh, or thick uh, fibrous band. We cannot see the plica except we have, have a considerable amount of uh, any uh, effusion. If we don't have effusion, we cannot report uh, plica. And this is very important to uh, know. Uh, of course, you all know that we have uh, another big title, which is patellar maltracking. This is May, this may need a, a separate presentation. And I have one before in the Nariman Hospital for patellar maltracking. Uh, but we have some points, we can see it here in the patella, the retropatellar cartilage. It has to be in its uh, femoral trochlea. The, the femoral trochlea should not be shallow. And uh, usually we can see here the retinaculum and the medial patellofemoral ligament injuries. Uh, this is what uh, we can see in a case of even uh, transient uh, uh, or uh, post-traumatic uh, patellar uh, dislocation. Condomitia patelli, of course, we have grading for this, starting from only change in the signal of uh, we, are, uh, we were describing the uh, bone marrow changes around the knee, starting from uh, marrow edema, uh, simple marrow edema, transient bone marrow edema syndrome, uh, sunk or uh, stiff sunk spontaneous necrosis of the knee and uh, subcondyl insufficiency uh, fractures of of the knee. Uh, we can see here this is the uh, famous osteochondritis discus in the young age group, and it can be uh, the rule of MR in. Uh, 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 osteochondritis distance is uh, the uh, uh, stability or instability of the osteochondral uh, fragment. لكن حواليكم بس بعض ال الحالات اللي ليها في حاجات منها ليها علاقة بالكيسز بتاعتي وفي حاجات لا عشان برضو نبقى مش كله يعني just simple presentation يعني فممكن نبدا ب واحد خمسة سامعين سامعيني كويس كده؟ سامعين فندم can see here this is case of left knee injury and can see this big 
cyst in the posteromedial aspect of the uh, right knee, left knee, sorry. You can see here. This is how can we see the images in our workstation. Uh, you can see here. You can see this big cyst, and this is the connection there. The connection, this is not a good image. That's it. This is the tear in the meniscus reaching the inferior articular surface. And this is the connection that we can confidently describe that this is a parameniscal uh, cyst. And this is the site of the cyst. Was true. Medial very big meniscal cyst compared to the <laughs> type of the uh, tear. Another case left also. As you can see here, cyst in the, lat the, the medial gutter. Here, it's better. You can see this transverse tear, as I said before, the most common type associated with meniscal tear is the transverse tear. You can see here the connection for the meniscal cyst. The joint fluid to reach the, uh, this cyst, big cyst in uh, in this medial gutter. Septated, maybe missed for ganglion, not a uh, meniscal uh, cyst. This is a nine year old girl complaining of vague pain inside the knee. This is gradient images. Can we go direct for the PD fat set? Can you see here? This is the median meniscus. Posterior hole is larger than the anterior hole. And then suddenly we can see here the lateral meniscus with a big signal at the body. Can you see this? At the lateral meniscus, you can see this signal. And this is, we saw in the, in the lecture, this is the meniscal flounce. You can see here, this is funny sex. June, I ordered the patient to come again. You can see here, this is the same patient. And this, the lateral meniscus, this is not a tear. Or the meniscal flounce, as I said before. Nothing in the lateral meniscus. This is the same patient when it comes again for uh, MRI with different angles. Patient complaining of diffuse pain in the, you can see here, degenerative changes of the meniscus. You can see here. And see here the loss of cartilage totally in the posterior horn, posterior uh, medial femoral condyle. You can see here the cartilage of the tibia. We can see that cartilage totally. This is advanced osteoarthritic change. But we saw in the same patient multiple loose bodies, and we um, grab this as it's of synovial origin. Is it synovitis? And this is very nice with this patient. It's simply, you can describe it from the uh, X-ray case of synovial uh, osteochondromatosis. Uh, finally, as I started the lecture, 
I need uh, from you good history and thorough clinical examination, and then you uh, drive us uh, positively where to search. What are you searching for? This is very important for us. We have x-rays, of course, it's very important in musculoskeletal images. Ultrasound is very important with good experienced uh, ultrasonographer. And uh, MRI uh, specific indication sequences, where to look for the atypic four. As I said before, we have uh, early uh, uh, diagnosis is very important. And we have to work in one team not in this manner, but uh, uh, I hope uh, that we uh, receive the, usually the uh, data we need from you to uh, have a good uh, record. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Khalid. Thank you. As I said, the clinical examination is very important, and the history. The other thing is that we have to work together as a team. ان احنا نتصل ب... نتواصل مع بعض ون... ونريكومند الام ار اي تو سبيسيفاي ا سبيشال ستراكشر شكرا جزيلا شكرا جزيلا محمد عايزين الدكتور خالد يرجع لنا تاني بقى عليه اسئله كتير جدا عايزينه يجاوبها يجاوبها لنا ان شاء الله اسئله كتير اسئله كتير تكتبها اه اسئله كتير للدكتور خالد Can we know the stable flap in the horizontal tear? Can we know the stable flap in the horizontal tear? Stable? The stable flap in the horizontal tail. I think it we can we can we can judge if it is stable or not stable if you have an an efficient amount of fluid. The same, يعني running in the cleavage plane of the of the tail that separates into upper and lower parts. If it is just the signal only inside that we can see in the MRI, we cannot. Judge if it is stable or not, but if we have a, a considerable amount that separates this uh, uh, portion, I think we 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 may not answer this question. Barul Dr. Abdullah Bias and Dr. Khalid, Bihul, what is the difference in connection between Baker cyst and the meniscus cyst in MRI? Uh, uh, we we don't have uh, uh, Baker cyst is is is, 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 is cyst usually can we have a link with degenerative process, meaning yani, uh, posteriorly uh, at the recess between the medial head gastrocnemius and the uh, the same membranous uh, muscle. Uh, it is famous in this. Uh, it is uh, yani, at this point only. This is the Baker cyst. But the meniscus cyst, as you saw in my cases, it, it, it can be anywhere according to the uh, uh, area of, uh, area that the fluid runs through. Uh, it might be posterior, it might be inside the uh, intercondylar notch, it might be in the gathers laterally or medially according to the tear, it is lateral meniscus or medial meniscus. But uh, and in most of the cases, we can uh, uh, diagnose this Diagnosed both separately. The Baker cyst is usually posterior, medially, and at the uh, recess between these two muscles, the meniscal, the paramenisical cyst is con uh, uh, connected to the site of the tear and related to the meniscal. Dr. Mahmoud Hashish, how to see root tear lateral meniscus in MRI? Accordingly, the orientation that we are going to walk with, Dr. Bahai. As I said before, it is in the sagittal oblique tears, sagittal oblique sequences. You can see cut by cut, as I said before, in the 
in the in the case presentation that at the uh, the end of my uh, lecture we see the sequence by sequence and we can see it correlating between the sagittal images and the medial images the anterior root and the posterior root and uh, at, at this point i have to see i have to say that uh, the anterior root usually full of peat folds peat folds uh, as it uh, sometimes we have a lot of signals inside the root of the anterior whole lateral meniscus and this should not be uh, mistaken for uh, a tear amen Dr. Salah Abdurrahman Biesel, we all specify, please, post mastectomy MRI findings. Uh, post operative, as I said, we need to see or know the type or the shape uh, of the tear uh, before the operation. And then we need to know the procedures done. Uh, is it, uh, as I said, partial meniscectomy, is it suture, just the breadment. Uh, sometimes uh, this causes a lot of uh, some people, you know, they see the images though that did nothing. No, it is uh, uh, the, the breadment times it is not apparent in the following MRI in the uh, uh, in the uh, after the uh, after the operation, as I said before. Uh, so, uh, sometimes our important uh, notification in the report for after the operation, no recent meniscal injuries identified. This is very important. But uh, as the, the, the third before, uh, it is not apparent in the following uh, uh, MRI, following the operation. Dr. Ibrahim Tawil B.S. Albut, any another way to diagnose the blight radiologically if the case is chronic with no effusion no way no way for us we cannot be uh, confident if, if you didn't see uh, the blight running through the uh, any, any amount of effusion at so the space is it is a it is as a potential space is distended with the uh, uh, joint fluid. So if this effusion is uh, uh, distending this pouch, so we can see the plica running through this. If the if the effusion is not here, we can see the plica. This is my uh, opinion. Amen. Amen. Dr. Mohammed Mesbah, BSL, will a brief about sequences of MRI T1, T2, steer, and fat suppression. Uh, I, 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 I will not go through the physics. It's very complicated for us as radiologists. But uh, 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 the, the, the main issue is that we have multi-modality. So the MRI is described as multi-planar, multi-parametric. What is called multi-planar? That we take it as axial, sagittal, and the coronal from the start. Not like the CT. The CT, we take... raw data for the workstation to make this reconstruction, sagittal axial 3D images that you ask for. But the MRI from the start, axial, sagittal, and corona. And then we have multiple sequences, T1, T2. The, the, the famous uh, uh, difference between these two uh, sequences is the fluid. You can see the fluid in the uh, T1 is black. Uh, the fluid in T2 is white. So uh, it, uh, usually you can describe for the young radiologist, the spine, the CSF, when it is black, it is T1. The CSF, when it is uh, uh, hyper white, it is T2. Uh, and then this, uh, we can see the different structures with different appearance in these sequences. So we need to go for fat suppression. We suppress the fat in the T1 for uh, injection of the contrast and when suppress fat in the T2 or in the, in the PD fat set uh, for uh, uh, to see the marrow edema, the soft tissue edema, the muscle injuries, uh, and so on. This is a very complicated topic, but for us, it is very important. And you, when uh, you are in your practice as a non-radiologist, uh, uh, 
by time you can know you can know these sequences and uh, uh, to be familiar with this. تمام تمام شكرا دكتور خالد انتهت الأسئلة مرة تانية بشكر حضرتك على المحاضرة الجميلة الممتعة دي وبشكر شركة لبتس على رعايتها للميتنج ده وبشكر صاحب الفكرة الرائعة دي الدكتور عادل رفعت رئيس القسم بتاعنا شكر جدا لحضرتك أشكركم دايما على وجودي مع مع حضراتكم وأتمنى فعلا المحاضرة تكون يعني مفيدة لأن دايما اختلاف درجات الأودينس ان عندنا طبعا اساتذه كبار موجودين وناس اكسبرتس وعندنا ناس بيبداوا فلازم نحاول دايما ان احنا نبقى ان نخاطب الكل يعني عشان الناس كلها تبقى معانا فاتمنى اكون نجحت في هذه النقطه وان شاء الله بارت 2 نكمل بقى الاي سي ال واصدقاء ان شاء الله المره الجايه باذن الله ان شاء الله ان شاء الله ان شاء الله دكتور عادل رفعت تحب يكلمنا باشا الاول شكرا جزيلا يا دكتور بهاء وشكرا جزيلا دكتور خالد بي مين باذن الله بارت 2 باذن الله بارت 2 وحاجات ثانيه كمان باذن الله ان شاء الله باذن الله نتعاون دايما باذن الله دكتور خالد باذن الله يا فندم شرف ليا يا فندم الله يخليك دكتور عبد الله حماد اولا يعني شكرا جزيلا دكتور خالد لان صراحه لمست منه تعاون يعني وحماس منقطع النظير للفكره وهو ابدا الراجل تعاونه الكريم حتى في المواضيع ان شاء الله المستقبليه وكان مرحب جدا بطريقه يعني حسستني ان احنا يعني معانا فيري جود سبورت من قسم الاشعه فاشكر حضرتك جدا دكتور خالد على تعاون حضرتك واتمنى ان شاء الله اتمنى ان شاء الله تكون ديت يعني بدايه جديدة بأفكار الشباب اللي أحب أذكر أساميهم الدكتور محمود حشيش والدكتور محمد عاطف اللي هم لهم جهد الأكبر صراحة في تنظيم دول الدينامو دول يا دكتور عبد الله نعم دول الدينامو بتاع بتوعنا دول أيوة لهم فضل كبير والله إن هم اشتغلوا يعني رجالة خاصة يعني في يعني ظروف الدول التعب وكده فربنا يكرمهم وبتشكلنا يا دكتور عادل على الافكار الجريئه دي وربنا يكرم يكون القسم ان شاء الله كده دايما حاجه جامده كده وبلندد ليرنينج وحاجه عصريه ان شاء الله باذن الله ان شاء الله ده موفق يا باشا ان شاء الله وان شاء الله